Throughout the centuries, there have been many execution methods used to take the lives of people who were condemned to death by kings, queens and rulers. But one of the most brutal and barbaric execution methods utilised a weapon which for centuries had been used on the battlefield to pummel and pound castles and fortifications. But these were then used against humans. But these executions by cannon were known for being brutal and they were used by different armies to send a clear message to their enemies and to populations to fall into line. But what cannot be dismissed is the eyewitness testimony of those people who saw someone being blown from a gun or a cannon. Join us today as we look at the executions of the men blown from a cannon. And as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Blowing from a gun was an execution method which has been around for centuries, from the 1500s, and it was even used in the 1900s. It was used by many different armies, including the Portuguese, in their colonies, and also it was used by the Mughals against rebels who were wanting to send messages to their enemies. But it is most closely remembered as a figment of the brutality of the British colonial rule in India. It was used to suppress rebellions across the country and to execute rebels as well as Indian sepoys who had been found guilty of deserting and betraying the British. But the method was one which was completely barbaric and the cannon would be loaded with a cannonball at times but also blanks and even grape shot. There were many problems with the executions as often when the cannon was fired with the individual tied literally to the end of the barrel Parts of the body would scatter everywhere, and bits of bone would splinter and actually embed into the bodies of those who were there to witness the execution, and they also would be injured. The individual would literally be tied to the end of the cannon, which was then fired, and there was no chance of escape. The birds of prey in the local area would soon realise and work out what was happening, and they would circle around the execution sites, and pick up and eat the parts that were scattered by the cannon fire, and some witnesses would see dogs waiting for their feast. During one execution, which went horrifically wrong, as the soldier who was shot just slipped slightly down the cannon as the shot went off, it was said by a witness, one wretched fellow slipped from the rope, by which he was tied to the guns just before the explosion, and his arm was nearly set on fire. While hanging in agony under the gun, a sergeant applied a pistol to the head, and three times the cap snapped, the man each time wincing from the expected shot. At last a rifle was fired into the back of his head, and the blood poured out from the nose and mouth, like water from a briskly handled pump. This was the most horrible sight of all. I have seen death in all its forms, but never anything to equal this man's end. Another witness described the method of execution, saying, The prisoner is generally tied to a gun, with the upper part of the small of his back resting against the muzzle. When the gun is fired, his head is seen to go straight up into the air, some 40 or 50 feet. The arms fly off right and left, high up into the air, and fall at perhaps a distance of a 100 yards. The legs drop to the ground beneath the muzzle of the gun, and the body is literally blown away altogether, not a vestige being seen. It was also used in Afghanistan, and one witness of an execution there said, The three men were then tied with ropes to the guns, their backs against the muzzle. The rope fastened to one of the spokes of the wheel, passed with a knot round the arms, over the muzzle of the gun, round the other arm, and then to the spoke of the opposite wheel which kept the body fixed. The Portuguese explorer, Francisco de Almeida, would blow many people from guns during his conquests, and during one Portuguese campaign in the 17th century, one woman who was suffering so much by the occupation turned to cannibalism, and the conquistadors were so repulsed by this that they were going to blow her from a gun and execute her in this way until local churchmen and clergy members managed to try and prevent this. But the British in India 
would have a long history of executing people by blowing them from a cannon or a gun, as they would use capital punishment for a long time. They decided to adopt the old Mughal punishment, and it was the East India Company who settled on this specific execution method, and they would then execute thieves in this manner, blowing them from cannons to deter others. Those who tried to convince others to rebel and protest British colonial rule were also executed in this way. In 1806, during the Valor Mutiny, there was a nighttime massacre of British officers and soldiers, and many sepoys were killed during the suppression of the mutiny, and six specifically were blown from guns. Further plots were uncovered in the years later, and these men were then blown from guns. Sometimes, on the rare occasion, someone who was sentenced to be blown from a cannon could be pardoned. For example, in 1784, when a regiment rose up about their pay, 12 men were ordered to be blown from a gun, but the last one was lucky. He had to witness the other 11 men being executed in this brutal way, and he was tied to the mouth of the cannon, and three times the fuse blew out when he was about to be fired but the man in charge then decided to pardon him for this. One man had a terrible ordeal, as following his court-martial, he was condemned to be blown from a gun, but instead his sentence was commuted to be hanged in chains when he was placed in a gibbet, and he suffered a slow and painful death. The execution method of blowing from a cannon was used a lot during the suppression of the Indian Rebellion of 1857, where many people were executed in this way to try and deter those who were committing insurrection against the British. It was said, on the 8th of June, two sepoys from the 35th Light Infantry were blown from guns. 10th of June, in Ludhiana, Peshawar, some 40 from the 54th Regiment were blown from guns. On the 13th of June, 10 sepoys from the 45th Regiment at Fazur were blown from guns, two hanged. The same day in Ambala, 10 sepoys from the 54th Regiment suffered the same fate. The 26th of the same month, in Aurangabad, one was blown from a gun, one hanged and three shot. On the 8th of July in Jalum, it is assumed that captured rebels would be blown away. On the 19th, Aurangabad, one was blown away, two shot. On the 5th of September, Setara, six were blown away. On the 17th of September, Multan, one blown away, 121, summarily executed. On the 23rd of September in Karashi, one was blown away, seven were hanged and 20 deported. The local body count on court-martialed individuals then came to four blown away, 14 hanged, 22 deported and three beheadings. At the end of October, in Rokhahand, near Agra, one was blown away. On 16th of November, Bombay, Two sepoys from the 10th Regiment were blown away. In certain regions of India, dozens of people were blown from cannons for their participation in different rebellions. It was a brutal execution method that was deployed as a way of keeping people down and scaring them from joining mutinies and rebellions. It was one of history's most horrific methods and would result in someone being literally blown to pieces. For those who witnessed the executions, it would be disturbing and barbaric to witness. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.